Hi everybody, Sean here from Hawaii on a beautiful hot September day in 2020 and I bought some motorcycle boots. This is kind of take two of me buying motorcycle boots online. Why do I have the old boots here? Um, I'll explain that in a minute. I wanted to get some good decent motorcycle boots. If I'm gonna buy a new motorcycle and be riding almost every day I need to protect myself. Now, I've always believed in protection, all the gear all the time. I wear the helmet, I wear a jacket, I wear good shoes, and I've been wearing uh, military style boots. And military style, they're flat out military. These are government issue. I spent 24 years in the military and uh, wore a variety of boots and I uh, got used to wearing them. These are a really old pair. These are a Belleville uh, steel toed combat boot. These are Navy issue. These have a Gore-Tex liner. They're insulated, so they're great in cold weather. Not that we get a whole lot of that here in Hawaii. In fact, we don't get any of it. But we do get rain, and this keeps your feet dry. But you know what? A good, uh, a good unlined leather boot will still be waterproof. This has got a gusseted tongue, so you can waterproof up to here. It's good uh, full-grain leather. A, a good polish, like the uh, parade gloss that uh, Kiwi produces that's uh, high in silicone or just the regular Kiwi wax. It's uh, a very good quality wax. It'll be good for waterproofing. Things like saddle soap, mink oil, uh, silicone treatments, camp dry, all these will help make a plain leather boot waterproof even without the Gore-Tex liner. But of course we know Gore-Tex is really good stuff. It's, uh, it's high tech. It's got microscopic pores that are smaller than a droplet of water, but they're larger than the water vapor molecules. So the, uh, the steam in this form of sweat will escape from your foot, but the rain won't come in. So Gore-Tex is a good thing to have in a motorcycle boot. But, uh, so I decided to go for a Gore-Tex boot, but more so than that, I want to get better protection. Now these military boots, these are the Bates Dura Shocks. Navy loves Bates shoes pretty good Bates boots and Bates shoes um, these have a nice thick sole very hard sole these are flight deck boots so they're not the best grip they're designed not to let foreign objects get stuck in your shoes to uh, to damage aircraft engines uh, but they suck for grip but they're nice and firm and they're steel toes these Belleville have a much better vibrant sole that's important when you're uh, stopped at a light, maybe you're at a slight angle or it's wet or oily and you you don't want to slip and fall and drop your bike. You need a good grip. So that's very important in a motorcycle boot of all things. Now they uh, they have a nice thick sole, a nice firm sole to prevent you from being crushed if the bike falls on your foot. Uh, that's very important. They have some uh, injection molded protection around the uh, ankle. These have a steel toe. Desert boots don't have a steel toe. Also desert boots will have vents in the side which are not very good for waterproofing but very good for letting the sweat out and the sand out. But uh, these will help prevent you from crush injuries. Also when tightly laced they'll protect you from torsional or twisting injuries because they have a nice high tight uh, uh, rise over here. So that's very important. And they're thick full grain leather so they're going to protect you from abrasion if you're rubbing along the, the asphalt on your ankles. But they won't protect you from crushing injuries of your ankle. So if you're in a low side where you your ankle gets pinned between the bike and the street, your ankle's going to lose. And that's where you want to spend a little money and get some ankle protection. Sure, if you got crash bars or maybe some really good uh, frame sliders, maybe it's going to protect you, or lightning quick reflexes, it's going to protect you from getting that ankle pin between the bike and the asphalt, in which case these boots are going to protect you just fine. But uh, I don't want to take that chance. I don't want to walk with a limp because I didn't want to spend the extra $500 on some boots. So I decided to go with real motorcycle boots. No disrespect to Belleville. They make some awesome, very comfortable, very protective boots, but they're not motorcycle boots. So, I, next thing, I didn't want to go to Amazon.com. It's kind of a necessary evil here in Hawaii. Amazon.com is, uh, is the world's largest online retailer, I think. I don't know. There might be Alibaba might be larger. I'm not sure. But those two are the big ones. And, uh, of course, they put smaller companies out of business. But in a way, they also help keep smaller companies afloat because those merchants are selling through Amazon. But there's also a lot of garbage out there. 
there's a lot of uh, counterfeit goods and you don't want to save 50 bucks getting a better price and then you know get injured in a crush injury because it turns out that uh, that D30 uh, armor turned out just to be memory foam and it didn't harden on impact and now you got a crushed ankle because your armor was fake or you know your stitching comes apart because they're not the real boots are made by some Chinese knockoff company you don't want counterfeits and that's a risky run dealing with these large vendors like Amazon so if you do deal with Amazon, you got to make sure it's a reputable company. It's a factory authorized merchant. You buy something that's not factory authorized and there's not something right, even if it's not counterfeit, if it's gray market, you're not going to be able to return it. You're not going to be able to get warranty service. You just flat out screw it. So you didn't save any money. You lost money by buying something that wasn't good. That's why I like to go with uh, authorized merchants. When I buy stereo equipment, I go to places like crutchfield.com where I know if I buy a clip speaker, authorized by Klipsch. I can return it to Klipsch. I know they're going to ship it to me for free. And the uh, great thing about Crutchfield, if I ship it back, they pay for me to ship it back. Now, these companies like uh, Revzilla, for example, wonderful company. I love those people. It's one of my favorite places to buy motorcycle equipment from. And they ship for free to uh, 50 states, but they don't take returns free from 50 states, from 48 states. So when you're in Hawaii, shipping is expensive. You got either the United States Postal Service is your best bet, and if the United States Postal Service goes away, then we're screwed, because all we got then is uh, FedEx or, uh, or UPS. And we don't have UPS ground here in Hawaii. They tried it, and the trucks kept sinking into the ocean, so we don't have UPS ground here. So if a company normally ships that way, then they may not ship at all to you. So I, uh, I bought some beautiful uh, Tourmaster Renegade waterproof uh, Gore-Tex harness boots from Revzilla.com. They're absolutely beautiful. Full leather. They don't look like technical motorcycle boots. They look like badass biker boots. They're really cool. And they have uh, built-in shin and ankle protection, but you can't see it. It's not noticeable. They just look like regular boots, and that was really cool. But it's a European company, and they're not made for American feet. Not that my feet are all that wide. I don't have Sasquatch feet, but they're a wide width. A little bit wider than a normal foot and these European boots generally tend to be narrow so I bought them they arrived they shipped them for free they didn't fit I returned them they took them no problem but I had to pay shipping it was about 36 bucks would have been a lot more if I'd used the original box they shipped it to me in or if I'd shipped with uh, FedEx or UPS it would have cost me like 50 60 bucks to ship them so it cost me 36 bucks because I didn't know what size to get and it turns out Tormaster doesn't make boots that'll fit my foot so the next thing I was looking at TCX. TCX is an Italian company, and I thought, oh no, another European company. But I read a lot of online reviews, and people were saying that even though they're not wide widths, they're wide enough to fit the average American foot. So after reading enough, uh, enough reviews, I took a chance. But once again, I didn't want to make the same mistake twice with Rosilla. So I went to Amazon, and I found a company that... Uh, has a very, very high, over 98% uh, satisfaction rate with customers and appeared to be factory authorized retailer. So I thought I'd give them a try. So these came in the mail. And let's see if they fit, let's see what they are. All right, TCX boots, it's an Italian company. These boots are made in Romania. So yes, they're European boots, but they're supposed to fit American uh, feet. And spoiler alert, I tried them on already a couple minutes ago and they did fit. So cut to the chase. They fit and I'm happy and they're very comfortable. But let's see what they look like. I mean the box is intact. It looks like either, I don't know, they got caught in the rain or somebody's dog chewed on it a little or I don't know, some sort of abrasion on the box. But it looks like a real authentic factory box. Hard to tell. The uh, logo branded uh, wrapping paper was intact all here. The Gore-Tex labels and the user manual looks authentic. You know, I can't guarantee. It could be a really good fake, but it appears to be the real McCoy. So let's pull them out. They look like brand new boots. They don't appear to have been, uh, have been worn or walked around in. They look like they may have been handled a little bit. Like I said, I tried them on just a minute ago, so they've got a little dirt on the bottom for me walking around on my patio. But... I didn't take them out riding, and it doesn't look like anybody actually wore them before me. So, 
this is a real motorcycle boat. It looks a little more funky than those uh, badass, uh, the renegade waterproof boots from Tourmaster that were too narrow and I had to send them back. Yeah, they don't look as cool as that. They don't look like, you know, biker boots or cruiser boots or cowboy boots. These definitely look like touring boots, and they are. But that's not a bad thing. They're not maybe as fashionable as military issue combat boots. Those look pretty badass at a mosh pit, but at the rock store or the motorcycle cafe, these are gonna look pretty good. And they're comfortable enough to walk around a little bit, to go out to that cafe, get a cup of coffee, a, uh, you know, some ice cream or whatever, a non-alcoholic beverage, but they're not all day walking around boots, but they are designed to be worn all day when you're, uh, when you're riding around on your bike and to be able to get off now and then without having to change out of your boots. When I commute to work, I'm probably going to bring a change of shoes with me. But then again, I sit in a chair most of the day, so these would probably be fine for that. There's some flexibility. There's the uh, accordion here. There's flexibility in the sole, which is good. But you can feel it's really stiff from side to side for those crushing uh, protections. There's uh, the, one of the reasons the, that I like the newer TTX, TCX uh, boot over the older Evo model, this is the 5.4, the newer one, is the uh, protection is integrated. On the old Evo boot, you have a, uh, you have a uh, plastic slide or nylon slide, whatever it is over here. You have this big diamond shaped or triangular shaped plastic thing on the outside of your boot. That's great, wonderful protection, but it you know looks like you got a thing. It snags on your pant legs if you try and tuck them in and all this. With th with this the newer boot, the protection is integrated. It's inside. You don't see it, but it's there. Trust me, it's it's there. You got malleolus protection on the radial and lateral sides. You got the uh, injection molded protection on the uh, heel cup. Still flexible, but stiff enough to protect you. You got some reflective material built in. You've got the accordion front and back. You've got that CE rated shin protection. So when you smack your shin on the uh, pegs, you're not, uh, you're not crying in pain. Uh, the toe's a little bit flexible, but there is protection here. You've got your uh, shift guard. It's a thermoplastic rubber uh, shift guard. So you got a good grip. It protects uh, my old motorcycle boots it was scuffing the leather but you know that's okay I mean on my old combat boots when you shift but these are designed to uh, not take any wear when you're shifting and uh, some of the people in the review said now why on earth do they put the the shift protector on both shoes I, you know on both boots you're only going to shift with one foot well that's for symmetry I guess they thought it would look even more silly if only one boot had the protection but uh, I don't know, honestly, I don't think it would. I don't think it would look any more silly than it does being on there in the first place. It's obviously a technical boot. It's a motorcycle boot. Knowing which side the shifter is on on every bike out there is is just what goes along with motorcycling. So, uh, but like many other boots, they made a judgment and put them on both for symmetry. So these are Gore-Tex boots, as I mentioned. You got some nice Velcro. You got a. Uh, YYK zipper in here. So they're easy on, easy off. It's gusseted, so the water protection comes all the way up to here. This is Gore-Tex all the way up to here. Now, reaching inside, pulling out the insole, extremely thin, very thin. You see it looks like it's channeled and vented for ventilation, but this is gonna wear out very quickly. So you might want to spend a couple of dollars and, you know, go to the drugstore or, you know, go online or whatever and, and buy some insoles or pull them out of your old boots or whatever. And that'll make a big difference. But the boot is still comfortable even with that thin insole because it's still cushioned underneath. And I don't know in this light in my bedroom if you can see, but it actually goes, uh, the Gore-Tex sock liner goes all the way down to the floor of the boot, to the uh, insole and all the way up to the toe. The, the entire boot up to here is enveloped in this nice waterproof, breathable Gore-Tex liner. So these are some good quality boots. And it appears 
to my untrained eye to be authentic Gore-Tex. It's got all the branding and everything on it. So this is the TCX X5.4 GTX. GTX, of course, being for Gore-Tex motorcycle boot. And uh, uh, on the Revzilla website and some of the other websites, they sell for about $300. They had the old boots, the, uh, the Evos and the, the regular uh, TCX5s for, uh, for about $150 on closeout. Of course, they never have my size on the closeouts. Plus, uh, those are the old boots. I was able to find these on Amazon for the new boots for $150. That's why I was worried at first. I'm like, but you know, am I getting the real boot? Because it's not worth saving $150 if you're buying counterfeit goods. So I was very careful about vetting the particular merchant that's selling. So hopefully I made the right choice. And if I do another YouTube video from my hospital bed with a crushed ankle, then I'll be apologizing for leading you astray. But uh, I have a good feeling about these. Anyway, those are my new motorcycle boots. And yes, a couple minutes ago I tried them on. It was awkward trying to hold the the iPhone and, uh, and video on trying them on and we're getting a lot of wind noise that was out in my backyard trying to enjoy the ocean view out there but uh, they fit they fit large enough so that when my feet sweat and start to expand on a long hot ride they'll still fit uh, better to be too loose than too tight you can always put thicker socks on but you know you can't make your feet any smaller 100% uh, Full grain leather boots will uh, wear in over time, expand a little bit, they'll only stretch out so much. So you want to buy a boot that fits. It's a little bit bigger, you can make it fit, you could put tissue paper in the front of the toe, or you can you know, put in a thicker insole or a second insole, or you could just wear thicker socks or wear two pairs of socks, but you can't make a, a boot smaller. So I did my best to get the closest size possible, and I think these are going to be good. I don't wear thick heavy socks here in Hawaii because it's hot. But uh, I might do the old Navy trick if, if they're a little big. I put a thin sock on, a, th a thin uh, synthetic or a synthetic blend sock because cotton is just a sponge and absorbs water. So everything they taught us when we were kids was wrong about cotton. And then over that, on the outside, then I'll put a boot sock, either a wool blend or a synthetic wool blend or something like that. That's uh, not too warm, but thick enough that it's going to give me some insulation from the big boot, you know, my foot sloshing around in there. So, uh, anyway, those are my boots. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll try and check on that now and then and respond to them. But I'm Sean here in Hawaii with my new TCX uh, Gore-Tex boots.